it's called Dunbar. It only seems appropriate uh, for us poets, and then she's going to end this at um, uh, How Poets Sing and Die. Make one song and heaven takes it. Have one heart and beauty breaks it. Chattering, Shelley, Keeks, and I. Ah, how poets sing. In 2006, I visited the Elmina Slave Castle located in Ghana, West Africa. For countless numbers of men, women, and children, this would be their last stop before boarding those ships bound for here. They say she could hold 1,500 between her granite teeth without gagging. Elmina, I do not imagine that you sleep well at night, but that you like to see at your feet are always churning, foaming at the mouth like something rabid and unpredictable. The men that study your tides say that as the earth plate shift, you and the sea will continue to move further and further apart. But I say that the ocean is running away from you and will continue to run until it runs into itself and there is no ocean left. They say she could hold 1,500 between her granite teeth without gagging. Elmina Castle, like this was all just some fairy tale. All they ever wanted was a foot to shove into a glass slipper, and we could have our happily ever after, after all. But what do you get for the woman who has everything? You bring her 1,500 bodies every year for 400 years, only to find that she is insatiable. I approach her gaping mouth as Jonah, already knowing how the story goes, knowing that I will see the belly of this beast one way or another. I enter, sign my name into the visitor's logbook, and descend into her bowels in the women's quarters. The stench of humans still rings heavy in the air. Urine, sweat, feces, menstrual blood, fluid, rot 400 years later. The Portuguese have long since packed up and gone home, but I am told that this smell will never leave, nor will they. In this 97 degree heat of Africa, they still manage to chill the air, run their spirit tongues down the back of my neck, the women. They are playing in my hair, twirling suspicious ringlets in between fingertips, clenching broken thighs and clutching swollen breasts, longing for something to nurse. They sing back to Elmina, a warrior song that will keep her awake at night. I say the ocean is running, but the women are singing the ballad of Elmina in a 1500 part harmony. I heard of chariots swinging low and bodies hanging high. I'd walked across Bone on Wall Street. I could recite Malcolm and Swindle like Detroit Red. I'd seen Roots twice. Fallen asleep during Amistad, twice. But no one ever told me about Elmina, not like they should have. They should have told me that I'm an American because someone survived and died surviving, that we are all Americans because someone survived and died surviving, that if I lick the face of a djembe drum, I can still feel their heartbeats beating back through it, that if I disassembled every skyscraper in New York City, I would find their spinal columns and its foundations, <clears throat> that if I counted the seven stripes on their backs, compared them to those on our flag, then I would know that Elmina Mina will not sleep well tonight. That she, like all good gluttons, will grow nauseous, gag, heave, and spit you back to us living ghosts. Back home.